a good few weeks. I've just been finally dedicating some time to my next and final book club pick for this book club that I've been doing for the past few months, and that's Margaret Atwood's Cat's Eye. It's a pretty hefty book, and of course, I have procrastinated. I was reading this while reading other things, but I was in the middle of Jasmine Ward's Let Us Descend, that just, I eventually had to put this one down and fully focus on Let Us Descend, because it's a very um, intoxicating and almost lyrical book where I just had to like give it my full attention. And I finished that yesterday, so now I am back to Cat's Eye, and I really need to finish this in two days because that's when my book club meeting is. So I have a lot of reading to do, but I'm enjoying this one more than I actually thought I would. I read Handmaid's Tale many, many years ago, and I remember being really struck by the ideas in that one, obviously, but I don't remember really enjoying like the writing style, and I just had this like idea of Margaret Atwood that I wouldn't enjoy her books, but I am intrigued by this one. It is about uh, a middle-aged woman who is going back to the city for her gallery opening or to show her body of work so she's having this big weekend in her career but we're also flashing backwards and forward in time because going back to the city is bringing all of these childhood memories to the surface her kind of nomadic lifestyle with her parents and her brother and then also her first female friendships and we've just been introduced to this young girl Cordelia and I think there's like this intoxicating female friendship that we're about to uncover. So I am actually enjoying this one. I just have so much reading to do. But um, I also want to share some apartment updates because we've actually been working on a lot. We've hit a bit of a standstill, but a lot has happened in the family room. I think you saw that we painted, the couch finally arrived, a couple of other bits arrived. We're in the bedroom now and this will be like the last priority in terms of rooms. I think the next bit we're going to focus on is the library, which is the one that I'm most excited about. I have tested out a paint color or two, didn't really like them. I am going for a dark green that almost has like a grayish undertone. It's a pretty dark room because it's in the middle of the apartment, so it doesn't get very much natural light, which I actually enjoy. I want it to be very dark and cocoony. But a lot of the colors I've tried so far are really like crayon green and not foresty green. So I need to get a couple more testers and then hopefully paint next weekend. And then the effort of the shelves will really be the next priority. Um, yeah, I want to show you some of the family room because a lot has happened there. But I actually am about to leave the apartment in like 20-ish minutes because... I don't have work today and I'm meeting up with my cousin to go to a coffee shop. I think we're going to do a nice long walk because it's actually really sunny and beautiful out today. It has been snowing. It's been freezing. The snow the other morning was absolutely glorious. We went on a long walk in the park at like 7, 8 a.m. before it turned gray and sludgy and it was gorgeous. It's my absolute dream. I've been wanting snow and it's finally nice out today, but I am trying to figure out because I haven't had a haircut in a very long time. And I went to get a haircut two, three nights ago. And the goal of this haircut was to preserve as much length as possible, but also acknowledging that I had a lot of dead ends because I hadn't gotten one in so long. But the goal was to make my curls springier. <laughs> because you might have noticed, and I think I've mentioned a bunch, I am really leaning into my curls the past year, year and a half maybe longer than that now. I used to blow out and straighten my hair every day, every other day. And I'm really trying to lean into my curls and also like figure out how to do my curly hair because I just have never dedicated time to like doing research and figuring out how to style my curls. So I was seeing all of these gorgeous people on TikTok who have curls and they get angles and then also layers so that their curls are springier or bouncier. And I copied them, or tried to, um, and so I did lose a lot of length, which I'm adjusting to, but it's fine. I've had very short hair in the past. It's just, I really like when I have long hair. Um, but I asked for 
angles, which I've had before, but then layers, which I've never had. So like the bits on the back of my head are like really short, which that's not a good view, but I have some very short pieces now. And like my front pieces are really short. So I almost like don't know what to do with my hair. So I need to kind of figure out if I should like be pinning things back, if I should just be letting it down, but I feel like I kind of look like Hagrid. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, it's definitely an adjustment because I'm not used to having such short pieces, but the, the haircut was successful in the fact that my hair is very curly because that's the thing with curly hair when you have long hair, or at least for me, my hair gets very heavy and weighed down by the length and then my curls are just a lot wavier. And like right now I have some true boing boing curls. So that's good. I just need to figure out now how to style this. I'm sure I'm going to put on a hat and it won't matter. That's what we're dealing with. I feel pretty good about it. A little bit sad that I don't have the length anymore because I feel like I was growing out my hair for so long. But I still do have like length. It's just some shorty pieces. Like I put my hair up in a ponytail yesterday and it was like a little nubbin because <laughs> of all the short pieces, all the layers. But I am going to go eat some banana bread. I made some fantastic banana bread the other day. I got a mixer for Christmas from my mom and my dad because I have been mentioning like wanting to get into baking and trying to find out which hobbies of mine or my interests, which are like spectator sports that I enjoy watching and learning about but not actually doing, and then which hobbies and interests I actually enjoy. And I was curious if I would love the act of baking in the same way. Like obviously I've, I've baked before, but in terms of like a regular hobby and something that I do. So I got a mixer. I've used it a handful of times and I really love it. So yesterday I made glorious banana bread, even better the next day. I absolutely filled that shit up with chocolate chips and I'm going to go have a piece and then I need to leave in like 10, 15 minutes to go and meet my cousin. We're gonna get a coffee and I will bring you with me. We might go to a couple bookstores if we have time. And then I desperately need to grocery shop tonight because we haven't grocery shopped in a long time. But I think in like the next few days, I'll show you more of the family room because so much has happened and I'm really loving it. And I also wanna explain like the vision because I have been such a Pinterest person the past few months, obviously like with moving and just like having an opportunity to decorate new spaces, but it's really coming together. The last few bits are the curtains, which we ordered a couple days ago. It took me forever to try to find something that I liked. So those are coming in the next few days. I think we'll want a chair, but it's not a rush. I obviously have to buy things over time. And then a TV, which I think we're buying from a friend because I don't really care about having a nice TV. <laughs> so those are the last few bits and then on to other rooms. Haven't you seen? If you help me support him, said Harry, not listening to her, I think we can get him inside. What has happened? asked Dumbledore. Ross Murder, what's wrong? The deep in the direction of Hogwarts. Dread flooded Harry at the sound of the words. He turned and looked. There it was, hanging in the sky above the school, the blazing green skull with a serpent tongue, the mark Death Eaters left behind whenever they had entered a building, wherever they had murdered. When did it appear? asked Dumbledore, and his hand clenched painfully upon Harry's shoulder as he struggled to his feet. back from book club where we talked about cat's eye i spent most of yesterday reading this book i read like 90 percent of it in one day 
because I had procrastinated so much. And I am still sifting through my thoughts, but I enjoyed, maybe enjoyed is not the right word, but I was very compelled to keep reading regardless of the deadline. It was a tricky book to read so quickly because it's a very distressing and upsetting book and gives you a lot to ponder. But it's about a middle-aged woman named Elaine. I think I mentioned some of this, a middle-aged woman named Elaine who is back in the city where she spent a lot of her childhood, really the traumatic bits of her childhood, her like early adolescence, like middle school and high school age. And she's back for the first time in a long time for um, an art exhibit of hers. And she's reckoning with these traumatic memories of her and some childhood frenemies, namely this one girl called Cordelia. And we're, you know, revisiting her childhood. There's also like a linear storyline, but we're also jumping back in time as we're reckoning with the things that happened to Elaine and how that, um, how that plays into the art that she creates as an adult into her adult relationships and also where she spends a lot of her mental time is thinking about the things that happened to her to her and about this woman Cordelia it's very distressing very dark especially the first half when we're in we spend so much time with Elaine as like an eight nine year old there's also a lot about the parents involved with these young girls, what they knew, what they didn't know, action they didn't take. So it's a very dark book, but some great character work, a lot of description. I really love a long book, but it probably could have been trimmed a little bit. Um, and I totally forgot that a book I read a couple years ago, Alias Grace, is also by Atwood, so I thought I hadn't read anything by her in a while. But I actually remember liking that and I really liked the Netflix show that was based on Alias Grace or the adaptation. So this was an interesting one. Definitely a lot you could study and like write a paper on. Like the way Elaine behaves, the arc she creates, the, the adult women that she had in her life that were examples of good or bad behavior her own internalized misogyny since she was a young child and how that really spills into all of her relationships with women and her opinions of women and her general dislike of girls and women but then also these horrible things that happened to her so an interesting one but I haven't been buying any books because I don't have anywhere to put them and I'm also just trying not to spend money but I did treat myself to one book at the end of the book club today because I feel like I'm proud of myself for joining a book club, for doing something outside of the apartment, for doing something that's kind of social, a little bit social. And I have had this book on my TBR for a long time, ever since I saw Ignacia, also known as Literary Iggy, talk about it. And I haven't seen it in a store. I haven't really looked, but I've just not seen it. And I saw it and I just had to get it. It's Love After the End, an anthology of two-spirit and indigenous speculative fiction, edited by Joshua Whitehead. So this sounds so wonderful. Ignacia has raved about it, and I'm also looking for a short story collection or just a really like short and quick book, which I don't normally gravitate towards, but I think I just need something to break up some of the really long books I've been reading for the first two months of the year. So I'll read a bit of the blurb, but it's also a gorgeous cover. So this is described as a bold and breathtaking speculative fiction anthology showcasing a number of new and emerging two-spirit and queer indigenous writers from across Turtle Island. Looks like some of the stories have some bioengineering, transplanted trees in space, etc. So this sounds really, really good. I remember being like so interested in it when I heard her describing it. So I think I might spend the rest of this evening reading this. It is time for a family room update. We actually went to Home Depot this morning to get all of the paint for the library, which is on the list for this weekend. And then we also got two paint samples for the dining room. 
because I'm still trying to figure out what we want to do in that room, but I think we're going to go for like a very dark, moody color. So we got like a cinnamony, toasty brown color, and then we also got a color that's almost like a red wine spill. So we'll see. I'm going to test those out, probably live with them for a while, but I want to share the latest update with the family room because we actually got the curtains yesterday. There was a little bit of a debacle with the delivery, but it all got sorted out and we have all four curtains and we hung them. And I think it actually made the biggest difference in making this feel very cozy and all come together. But um, yeah, I think we're pretty much there. Obviously things will change over time as we find cool bits of art, we'll hang things on the walls. But in terms of the big things, we have those. So I wanna share some of the inspiration for this room, I have been so obsessed with Pinterest. I kind of always am, but the past few months especially, because I want this place to feel very cozy and lived in and colorful, but like really a lot of different shades of green. That's where my mind resides. So um, for this room specifically, I was really into big sitting room, the big green sitting room from Emma, the most recent adaptation. So that was one of the main bits of inspiration. We don't obviously have all of the white trim paneling, but just like little bits here and there, I feel like I want to try to recreate some parts of that room. Honestly, my where my mind resides for interiors is really any room from a Jane Austen adaptation. I love all of the rooms in Pride and Prejudice. I love all the rooms in Sense and Sensibility, even like the candlesticks and the little ledges with books and tchotchkes. And I just want this place to feel very lived in. So I will pop up some of my other favorite Pinterest saves for this room, or just bits of inspiration. And then I'll share where we're at and then close this video out because I think it's been kind of a long one. I know it's kind of dark, but this is the family room. We have the silver rack that we've had for a really long time. It's actually from my grandparents' house. And then the mantle surround and the mirror are things that I treated myself to. Um, but then that piece of furniture on the far right is actually something that was just outside that somebody was throwing out. So we picked that up and we'll have this for a while as long as we need to. But um, I definitely prefer a much darker wood, like our little end tables here. But it certainly works for the time being. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then this is the couch. It doesn't even look as dark on camera, but it's a very dark green. So I love the dark green against the pale green walls. I really love these curtains. They're very thick and they feel very uh, cottagey and cozy. So I love the little bit of texture there. So I feel like the mantle and this little section definitely screams Emma. So I'm glad that bit of my vision got to come to life. So I love this part. I just feel like it looks so romantic and really beautiful. So I'm absolutely loving where this room is. I'm excited to hang things up on the walls and make it feel even cozier. And with that, I will close this one out because I think I've been talking for a very long time. But I should be back in the next few weeks with the January and February wrap-up. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon.